Okay. Welcome everybody to um, the Lucas County Commissioner's uh, um, pretty exciting announcement today to talk about masks um, as we uh, continue to uh, fight through our COVID-19 status, um, not only in Toledo and Lucas County and across the country and really across the world, uh, the Board of County Commissioners wants to do whatever we can to have tools in our tool bag to uh, fight this uh, virus and uh, help our citizens remain safe. Uh, so I, I am joined with, of course, um, Pete Gerken, who you know well, and Gary Byers, who you also know very well, my colleagues, and um, we're delighted to talk today. Um, we've also asked um, uh, Donnie Miller, our uh, fearless leader, um, with the Neighborhood Health Association's president and CEO. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and Joaquin Cintron Vega from our new, our new uh, leader of the um, LMHA properties. Uh, we're delighted you're a great partner already in your early tenure. And um, to our, uh, another one of our great friends, Suzette Powell, the Toledo Urban Federal Credit Union um, always works with us to combat uh, problems in our community. And so we're delighted that they're here and they, if they get a, if they choose, we'd love for them to say a word or two uh, following the commissioner's uh, information that we're gonna share today. Uh, as you know, um, and as you're watching and as you're a bit on the worried side, uh, the numbers of COVID cases are rising in Toledo and Lucas County, um, there are serious hot spots in Ohio as well, um, down south, um, and we're concerned about that. And we know that Wood County went to a red status, um, and we're, we don't want to go to a red status. We certainly uh, know cases are rising, and we're interested. I know all of us to hear what um, the governor says tonight on his address to Ohioans, uh, but with the with recognition that cases are going up, um, we want to continue to do what we know are the two most important things that we can do. Number one, we need to wear masks. And number two, we need to maintain social distance. So we are delighted um, to, to share with you that one of our community leader uh, business partners, um, Fiat Chrysler Automotive, uh, is sharing with Lucas County 124 some thousand masks. So we felt that it was our responsibility to move those quickly through the community. So they were prepared to share that with you today and our effort to work with community groups and then our um, member governance jurisdictions to get those out. So uh, we are going to move quickly. Um, we are going to uh, provide about approximately 25,000 masks to the, the credit union, to Neighborhood Health Association and to LMHJ um, because we work with our uh, partners to recognize that there's, um, that persons of color are at more at risk and we wanna combat that um, head on. Um, we also will be providing approximately 69,000 more masks to the city of Toledo because the city of Toledo has the largest, as you know, population in the county. And then we want to push these masks out to the members of uh, the rest of the jurisdictions in the county, both the cities, villages, and the townships, in order to uh, invite people to do the right thing, to, to wear masks, to, uh, to, to make it popular to wear a mask, to make it, um, you know, our, 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 our belief that I'm going to keep myself safe. I'm going to keep someone else safe and we're going to control this virus as best we can. We certainly got the numbers down and as we creep back up, we can fight like heck to continue to make a difference. So we don't want to go backwards with our economy. We don't want to worry about closing businesses and restaurants and zoos and things like that. Uh, we want to support all of our economy as well as the safety and health of our citizens. Um, so we're going to do this effort uh, today, and I know Gary and Peter are going to talk about more, more ideas on how to uh, combat uh, the virus, but uh, we're grateful to Fiat. They, um, they are a leader. They've been donating masks to the front lines of, for the pandemic to reach our, our, you know, our safety officers and our 
you know, our, our first line, uh, you know, healthcare workers, and they've been donating thousands and thousands um, of masks. And now they're reaching our level where we can get it out to some of our other uh, partners and some of our other uh, areas that provide governance. Um, they have done approximately 4.3 million face masks ac across North America. So what a, uh, what a way that they have stepped up. Um, and in, in, in addition to donating face masks, they are partnering with local nonprofit organizations and foundations to feed children through school programs through this pandemic. And they've been providing them approximately 4.4 million meals to children's families and seniors across North America. It's no surprise to any of us on this press conference today that they step up all the time and they're stepping up even to help us here in Toledo and Lucas County. So I'll turn it over to my colleague Pete and Gary and um, thank you everyone for being on this today and um, we're gonna get these masks out and, and, and get, help people remain safe. Pete, you're on mute, yeah, I'm gonna get you. Thank you, Tina, and thank you to our partners uh, today. And if this is really going to work, we have to have partners to do it. Um, we're going to provide the masks. I think over the next few weeks, you will see more masks than we know what to do with. And it's a really simple thing to do with your mask. Put it on. Put your mask on. Um, the masks are coming. It's going to be raining masks, we think. Uh, but there's a, we have partnerships with the people you see on today, but there's really only one partnership that we need. And we need the partnership with you as a resident of Lucas County. This partnership gets built one person at a time. Um, and, and it's great to have our broad-based partners and we will get the mask to them. But I'm asking you, the residents of Lucas County, this isn't, doesn't have to be a mandate. This doesn't have to be an order. We, we got masks. Where are the darn masks? We're struggling with what to do with schools in the fall. We're struggling to what to do in our workplaces. And FCA knows this as well as everybody. They're struggling in their plans to build cars and they wear those safety equipment. The workforce that you see in front of you wears masks, whether it be at the grocery store, whether it be police, fire, or our workers at, at the G plant and their subsidiaries. They're wearing masks. Let's respect them. Let's respect ourselves. We're going to give you the opportunity. You'll have a mask, however you can get it to you, but it doesn't work if you don't wear it. So the partnership we need is with you, the citizen, a one-on-one -on -one partnership. And if we can wear this mask just long enough, just long enough, not forever, the science tells us that we can beat this thing back. The more people that wears masks, the sooner we won't have to wear them anymore. I don't particularly enjoy it. I think um, I've got a great mask, but it's not a fun thing to do. I will wear it, um, my family will wear ours. I'm asking you to take these masks, wear them, stop the spread, be part of our community. It's not hard, we need each other to beat this thing. So put, we got the masks, you put them on, thank you. Good, thanks Pete. Commissioner Byers. All right, thanks Pete, and I absolutely agree. Uh, just a couple things on logistics that we want to, to uh, provide for folks. Um, we have about 100,000 masks uh, in addition to the ones that are being distributed to uh, the, our various partners that will be here are with us today. Uh, we want to distribute those masks to the cities, the villages, the townships of Lucas County, and we will allow each of those communities to decide how they're going to distribute that in their community. So if you live in the city of Oregon or Springfield Township or Jerusalem Township, you know, those are the entities that we're going to coordinate with our partners uh, in government so that they can figure out what's best and most effective to distribute for their particular communities. And that's something that, that we're looking to do. Uh, just a few comments on, on to sort of support uh, Pete's observations on, on masks. Mask, we all know from you know being inundated with information on the COVID-19 is, is primarily, a mask is primarily to protect others. People in a mask, if you're wearing a mask, it is an overt symbol of compassion for others. In our community, in our town, we, we worry about 
the welfare of our, our neighbors. That's what we do in Toledo and Lucas County. Uh, and this is a way to, to do that. Regardless of your political perspective, uh, whoever you support for president or don't support for president, uh, this is something different. Uh, this is a, a simple act of kindness to your neighbors. And that's why we're urging to you to take advantage of the opportunity to wear this. Uh, it is a, you know, we did a great job as a community when we were in our shutdown. And, and we, we, we closed off, we shut down the virus. And now it, the, in this resurgence, we have to take another action. And the masks are that action. But it's not as, as bad as when we isolated and were locked down for, for weeks and weeks. Uh, this is something that is relatively easy that we can do, that we can lower the number of cases in Lucas County and not have to close businesses down again. Uh, hopefully, uh, the governor will not be saying anything along those lines this afternoon uh, that uh, we have to shut down businesses. But one way we can locally make sure that we don't have to go down that road is by wearing masks. And it's, it's a simple act of kindness, something that we all should be willing to do. When, when we see someone else in a mask, we should smile because they care about us. And, and that's something that, that we need to get our minds around. And, and regardless of your political perspective, you know, it's a simple act of kindness. And, and for what it's worth, that's my two cents. Well, that's a good two cents, Commissioner. Uh, President Donnie Miller, would you like to have uh, you have been through such a big ordeal um, treating the, the well-being of so many citizens. Uh, I know you're thinking a lot about this, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for inviting me. Um, to all of you, um, all of you uh, commissioners on this call today, this is such an extraordinary move that you're making to um, take this time to emphasize the important of what is clearly now a public health issue. There is absolutely no denying that we are facing in this country um, one of the biggest public health crises that we've had in certainly within our lifetimes. You know, there was a study that I heard just a little bit about uh, yesterday that where 46, 49 people were given masks to wear and they reduced the social distance between them. Um, they, they allowed more than inconsequential contact and then they tracked those folks for some period of time. And frankly, I can't remember what it was, but the important thing from that study was that none of those people, all of whom were wearing masks, all of whom who had a moderately reduced social distance and all of whom who had contact beyond what was considered inconsequential contact, none of them had COVID at the end of it. Pure evidence, really simple evidence that wearing masks work. If you are somebody who looks like me, if you, if you are somebody of color, um, not only are we more likely to have pre-existing conditions, but unfortunately the data shows that we are three times more often to get this disease and twice as often to die from it. The reasons for that are not clear. And frankly, for this conversation, they're really not important. What's important is that you have the power to allow yourself not to be one of those statistics. You have the power simply by wearing a mask. It's not a conspiracy, I promise you. This, this COVID thing is real. It is not some conspiracy. It's not, it's not some made up kind of thing to cause inconvenience. And it's certainly not designed to infringe upon your civil liberties. This, this is a real virus and wearing masks are not designed to infringe upon your, your civil liberties. Wearing a mask is one of the ways that we have been told that you can save your life. In, in, in addition to what Commissioner Byer said about the compassion that you show when you are wearing a mask to others, I am going to say that if you care about yourself, if you care about your family, if you care about anyone, you will wear this mask because it is a way to save yourself. 
recovering from COVID has gotten more and more complicated. The issues that are um, the side effects from a COVID, reco uh, COVID uh, recovery are more difficult. The, the, the recovery time can be six months or more. Um, there are all kinds of things now that we know about COVID that we didn't know in March. And it makes it more and more frightening every day. And it raises the question to me more and more why people would choose to expose themselves when really wearing a mask, washing your hands, staying six feet apart or further. In my office, it's a, it's a 24 foot long office. People aren't allowed to come in past the door. Um, the, the longer, the further, the, the distance, the better. Um, our staff is still not going to in-person meetings. So you have to take this seriously if you intend to protect yourself and your family and your community. Thank you so much for getting these masks out there. Commissioners, you guys are saving lives and we so appreciate you for that. Thank you for everything you said. Suzette Cowell, would you like to add a few words and then while Keem, you'll close us out. Are you muted to that or? <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'm a survivor of the COVID. Mm. So it's very important that you wear a mask. It's very important that you wash your hands. Just imagine 31 days away from your family. Just imagine that. Just imagine from being somewhere and nobody that you know can touch you, that you're familiar with. A mask is nothing compared. I mean, you have to wear your mask. No one should wanna go through that. And, um, you know, people think that it's not, it can't happen to you. Well, guess what? Like I said, I'm a survivor. So everybody that comes that I see, you gotta have a mask on. Um, it's just, that's the only way we're going to have any kind of conversation. Um, and we're teaching the people that come through the door that they don't feel like it can happen to them. And we're telling them, yes, it can happen to you. So we thank you, commissioners, for uh, providing us with masks to help our community stay safe. Thank you for that personal story. Joaquin, thank you for being here as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wozniak. Garkin Byers, Madam CEO Donnie Miller, Ms. Cowell, and all in attendance, good morning, and thank you for this awesome opportunity. Uh, Commissioner Garkin is right. It is as simple as wearing the mask. Uh, and I will also add, um, you know, to complement the use of the mask with additional supportive actions, we need to take additional steps to provide uh, continued education and active prevention is important uh, in the cases that are necessary to mitigate, you know, to have a plan to, to enter into mitigation actions. And in our case, as uh, the largest landlord in the Northwest Ohio area to ensure that we can uh, have a business continuity plan, right? To ensure the, the continuation of, of the services. So that with the following purpose, uh, to continue providing information and guidance about COVID-19 to, in our case, to employees, uh, to our clients, the people that we are serving, uh, the participants throughout all uh, the programs that we have, uh, to actively enforce actions that prevents COVID-19 from further spreading. And like I said, you know, to ensure the continuity in our case of LMHA operations and services to the residents and throughout our communities. So in, in other words, uh, we have been working uh, hand in hand with the county uh, and community partners. And we have, you know, we, we came together with all of them to ensure the safety and well-being not only of the people that we proudly serve, but also our families, friends, and, and others. Uh, every single affirmative action 
is now making a difference. And, and definitely uh, this initiative is one of those affirmative steps. Um, as, as a result of, of, of the proactive action that we have taken and in coordination with you, the county and our community partners, uh, I can say, and I am proud to say that LMHA has only had a relative low count of documented cases coming from the over 17,000 people that we serve, including our staff. But uh, that is not uh, happening in a vacuum. Uh, every single step that we are taking uh, is giving us the results that, that we uh, are now having. But anyways, uh, one case is too many. Yes. And yes, we can do more. And this is part of that. This is part of those additional steps. Uh, in addition, uh, I need to say, and thank you, Ms. Uh, Donnie Miller. Currently, LMHA is working with CEO Miller and the Neighborhood Health Association, uh, Mercy Health and LabCorp to provide free COVID-19 testing uh, to our people. So that is a, an additional step that we are taking working hand in hand with them. Uh, and I mean, lastly, as the largest landlord in Northwest Ohio, uh, we understand, LMHA understands that we play a key role and it is important uh, to insert the agency in initiatives like this one, where we all come together, resulting in the benefit of the community at large. Uh, and. I mean, on behalf of LMHA and the people that we proudly serve, uh, we appreciate the gesture of the county commissioners, uh, Commissioner Wozniak, Gherkin, Byers, uh, to make available that additional supply of masks that definitely LMHA will use to supplement and enhance the protective measures that we are taking to prevent uh, the spread of COVID-19. Uh, also, we, we commend the initiative from uh, Fiat Chrysler, who is proving to be a great community partner. So again, uh, thank you for thank this you. awesome opportunity. Well, we'll open it up to questions, but I want to thank Matt Hireman, who is our deputy uh, county administrator. And he brought over a box of masks to get started and they're ear loop face masks. They're easy to use. And so watch them, them getting, uh, instead of COVID spread, we're going to have mask spread. So here they come. So now I think Mary, you'll help us open up to questions if there are any. If not, I wanna thank our, our community leaders and uh, everyone who helped us get these out and in particular uh, Fiat Chrysler Automotive. Any questions, Mary? I don't see any questions at this time. Okay. You're you're welcome to call any of us if you need to ask any further questions. Uh, I know Mark Ryder is available, uh, as is Matt Hireman from our Emergency Operations Center as well. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, you're doing such tremendous work, um, our community leaders out there, and we thank everyone and uh, look forward to uh, continuing the decline of COVID cases. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Danny. Thanks. The Wear the Thank mask. <laughs> Thank you. Wear the mask. I got one. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.